think we're going to have uh, the, the children dismiss uh, for uh, a class tonight. But before we do uh, that, I just wanted to uh, take time and uh, not single anybody out here. <laughs> but she just happens to be picking up Ophelia. And uh, <laughs> we just want to thank Sister Jamie and, and everyone that did help uh, for this evening's uh, Thanksgiving meal or for this year's Thanksgiving meal. So thank you. Uh, to <laughs> to uh, Sir Jamie and everyone that, that helped. Thank you. So. Yeah, that, that's just kind of how timing works sometimes. That, that uh, right there, picking up uh, Ophelia. And, and, uh, and if anybody else thinks that they want to go downstairs, Sister Rachel's probably going to have a very fascinating... Uh, story from the Bible she's gonna she's gonna go over so now is your opportunity for the non kids up here to go downstairs and and listen to uh, to sister Rachel's uh, story from the Bible so um, going once going twice all right it's official so you're up here and I know I was uh, I was kind of kidding around that that uh, you know, we just had our, our Thanksgiving meal, and and I didn't uh, eat as much as I normally do because I found in previous years, the more that I eat, the more I, I'm a little lethargic. I don't want to get up here and and uh, get going. But I also was paying attention to uh, who went and got uh, seconds. So um, I'll be sure and make some noise and. Uh, Maybe pound the pew a little bit like pastor, or raise my voice, uh, get a little excited. So right there is a yawn. I saw it already. That's not a... <laughs> oh, boy. I didn't mean to point, point that person out. So <laughs> I could... <laughs> it just happened. So, um, But uh, we do want to uh, go ahead and, and get our, uh, our Holy Bibles out. And we, we do want to uh, have... Uh, this evening's service, um, like any other service, we're, we're not going to treat it differently. This is the Lord's service, so we'll, we'll read the Word of God and we'll, we'll just kind of dive into God's Word tonight. Uh, Matthew chapter 23 is where we're going to start. And and so I, I know I was, on the, was one of the people on the Facebook live stream uh, this morning. Uh, so I was at home with, uh, with our son, not feeling good, and, and so I, I, I normally don't get the, the, that whole experience, you know, I don't do social media, it's just, I just don't do that. So it was just kind of interesting to see that perspective of, of things and, and, you know, all the, the work that uh, has went into uh, that from the technology perspective and the people that have worked uh, to build our, our presence on, on the internet, and, and certainly, um, you know, I know looking at the, looking at everything on there that, uh, you know, you, you never know what God will do with something. And, and just, just to see, um, just to see uh, the Lord's legacy, uh, you know, everything, every message, uh, you know, the word of God is read and it's all, it's all preserved on, on the internet. And it's just, it's just uh, amazing. Anytime you, you need something. Uh, you want to go see a picture like like we have up here? I find it on the internet. So um, so just a special thank you for uh, for for building that that up as well. So Matthew chapter twenty three. We're going to read the first uh, three verses. So Matthew chapter twenty three, starting at verse number one. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you for, for being able to open your preserved word and, and Lord, just to just to do that in freedom here. And we just thank you, Father, for 
uh, for your church that, that you've given and for, for you, Jesus, that, that, that made it possible. And, and we just ask that this service redound unto you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. So I just uh, uh, was not looking at Brother Nathan's notes or anything, but we just kind of happened to hit the same portion of, of Scripture, just in a different book, uh, where Jesus is kind of dealing with the scribes and, and with the Pharisees and, and with the lawyers. So, so I, I, I wasn't looking at your notes, but you know, if you want to leave your notebook out, I will kind of, uh, I will kind of uh, look at them. So, but, um, but you know. I always like to start out with a picture from the from this <clears throat> from the past week, and and I thought, uh, you know, what better what better picture to start out with than to uh, highlight the church's bus ministry? Um, it's just a uh, um, it's a hard job, but it's uh, uh, the the people that that do the bus ministry has done a fabulous job. Um, just week in and week out, um, you know, they're there to to pick up whoever wants a wants a ride and and our uh, our bus I, I don't know if you can see but there's a reflection of our previous bus in in the uh the doors in there and so so if if this is if this bus isn't going out our other church van goes out so so it doesn't it doesn't uh doesn't matter which one this one or, or the previous one it's they're <clears throat> going out and picking up people to bring to to church and it's just just um, if you haven't seen this bus at night, that's something maybe you can post uh, in the comments where you'd like a picture of the bus at night. I think there might be pictures of the bus, but uh, the very first time on the bus at night, I was like, oh, there's so much color. <laughs> and then, then you get everybody on there, and then it's like, oh, there's so much color and noise. <laughs> so, so it, I mean, it takes, it takes people that are dedicated um, and, and they also have they also have help also uh, to you know from adults and from from some of the the teens help uh, on the bus ministry as well so just that's what I've been thinking of because I I've heard I've heard that somebody got saved in Club 316 a kid uh, sister uh, Zelma's grandson decided that Jesus Christ is God and that he need to be forgiven of his sins so that was made possible by the bus ministry. I also heard that there was some teens saved. I heard the testimony of a teen say he sinned and, and, and Brother Nathan went over scripture with him on Wednesday night and said, this is how you can be saved. And so, so we've all because of, of the, the bus ministry. So that's what I've been thinking about. So thank you to all that, that help. Um, just uh, we can't. The church can't function unless the church functions. So um, anyway, that was a lot of pre-message talk. So uh, kind of want to go over um, over the topic of Moses' seat. Uh, here, here in uh, Matthew chapter twenty-three, uh, then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, "The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat." All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not after their works, for they say and do not. So, so we're talking about Moses' seat uh, is kind of what we want to uh, examine a little bit. And, and so we're just going to kind of go over some um, maybe rudimentary questions, maybe some basic things uh, that just kind of um, will tell us what, you know, they sit in Moses' seat. What exactly does that mean? So... Um, well, we have to look at who is Moses? What did Moses do? So, so most of the times I have, the, um, I have a lot of different scripture tonight. And Sister Jamie's not here. She asked me, is you going to have a different message this week? I'm, I'm like, well, I actually I am. So, but she's not here, so I can give her a hard time without her fear of... Uh, re <laughs> I didn't mean that. But... Um, but, you know, we have to find out uh, Moses, and we'll get a little background on Moses here, and, and, you know, what did Moses do? You know, because we're looking at Moses' seat, and we're going to go over the book of Exodus, and, and we're going to go into Exodus chapter 24, and, and I said, you know, this is going to be a little different, yeah, because I've got, 
a little bit more scripture that we're going to read tonight that I don't have up on, on, uh, the, on, on some of these slides. But Exodus chapter 24, and I made sure to eat uh, two pieces of pie tonight. So, so that way, hopefully, it give me a little bit more, more, you know, give me a little bit more energy because all the energy just went downstairs. All, all the kids... All the kids went downstairs, so. But Exodus chapter 24, uh, starting at verse 12, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone, and a law, and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of God, and he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and, and her are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount, and the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud, and the sight of of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went up into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. So who was, uh, we, <clears throat> we know Moses was, was who God called to, uh, to help uh, be the leader of his people on the exodus from, from Egypt. But but what did Moses do? I, I just kind of want to think of Moses' seat. You know, Jesus said the scribes and the, and the Pharisees, they sit in Moses' seat. Mo, what did Moses do? Moses communed with God. Uh, and here in the portion that we just read in Exodus, uh, we have where God called Moses up into the mountain to commune with him, up into Mount Sinai to commune with him. And, and so I just wanted to uh, call this out that is something that the scribes and Pharisees should have been doing in Moses' seat. They should have been communing with God. And a little portion uh, I found interesting when you read this, um, Moses spent 33 days alone with God on Mount Sinai. Now think about that. That means that Joshua, Moses' servant, his minister, Joshua spent 33 days alone. Kind of remind you of somebody else. We know that Joshua in the Old Testament is the type of Christ. And how many days did Jesus spend apart from God the Father? I think he spent a number that has 33 on it. So just a little something interesting to think about. And Moses, he communed with God. Moses also taught them the commandments of the Lord. We find that, uh, we find that here. He was supposed to teach uh, the commandments. He was going to write on, uh, upon tables of stone, and he's also going to have commandments to teach them. And, and that's something that, that Moses did. He taught them the, the Ten Commandments, anywhere from thou shalt have no other gods before me, all the way to um, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. I, that was number nine, not number ten. <laughs> but I was trying for number ten, but you know how it goes when, when you're just going ad lib. So, um, but he taught them the Ten Commandments. He also taught them you know, something like Exodus twenty two nineteen, whosoever lies with a beast shall surely be put to death. He also taught them that commandment, that law. I mean, beast, I mean, essentially it's, it's bestiality. I mean, it's, it was a thing then and it was a, it's a thing now. And, and God said, no, don't, don't do this. He taught them. Also, in Numbers 19, 16, And whosoever touches one that is slain with a sword in the open fields, or a dead body, or a bone of a man, or a grave, shall be unclean seven days. Moses also taught this. He taught that dealing with, with, with people who have died is a serious subject, and that that's where diseases are communicated from. So you have to be unclean, you have to be set apart for seven days. So Moses also taught this, that the Lord had told them. And so uh, Moses also uh, was involved in judging people. 
we don't really think about that. We think of Moses being a leader, but we really don't think about him being uh, uh, involved in judging the people. But if you go back a, a couple chapters in Exodus 18, we will find him having a conversation with his father-in-law. At um, Exodus 18, Uh, verse 13, and it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. So, <laughs> a, a, quite a job, you know, what you're, you're judging matters between, you know, all the people that he was supposed to be leading from the morning unto the evening. And I mean, it was, it was a good thing to get some advice from his father-in-law at that point, where his father-in-law, you know, the thing that you're doing, Moses, isn't good. You're, you're going to be, you're not going to, to last from this. And, and so we do find that, that he heeded some good advice, and he, and he set up some people that would go, and you have a matter, go to, go to them, and they have a matter, go to them, and they'll eventually, Moses wound up judging the, the things that were hard, the things to judge. So... But he still was involved dealing with people and, and judging matters between people. So, so Moses communed with God. He taught the commandments of the, of, uh, of the Lord to people, and, and he also was involved in judging people. So, so we're just thinking about the scribes and Pharisees. They sit in Moses' seat, and these are some of the things that, that they should be doing and that we find, we find back here in Matthew chapter 23, let me get back over there with you. Matthew 23, then uh, verse 1, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. So, so the scribes and Pharisees, they were supposed to be sitting in Moses' seat. And, well, apparently we know that they were teaching the people. But, but Jesus had something besides that to say. What they're teaching is, is true. That's what I want my people taught. But... They're not doing what my people taught. And they're supposed to be sitting in the seat of Moses. Hmm. So they're teaching, but they're not doing. And in verse number, uh, we'll read verse number three and four. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne. And lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Wow. So they're teaching the people what the Lord wanted taught. They're in, Moses, they're in the seat that Moses held. They're in the position. I think we're starting to understand it's not an actual seat, but it's a position. They're in Moses' position. They're teaching it, but, but they're, 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 they're not doing the things they're teaching. And you know, I looked up. And you can go look up, and you know, so there's some places have different numbers, but there's 613, 618 different commandments that the Jews still observe today. And, and I tried to kind of match some of those up with where they're at in, in the Bible, and I wasn't actually able to, to, to match them up because I know they're, they're going off the, the, the Torah, which is supposed to be the first five books, but, but over 600 laws, but they were adding stuff to the law of God that they were supposed to teach. They were adding their traditions to the law of God. And this is where we find Jesus, we find God, the Son of God, had a problem with this. And, you know, I, I had an example here. I'm not going to uh, read it from Scripture, but, you know, there was a man that had infirmity for 38 years, and Jesus healed him on the Sabbath day. And the man 
did what Jesus told him to do, take up your bed and, and just you know, go home. And the Jews, doesn't say the Pharisees, it doesn't say the Sadducees, it doesn't say the scribes, it doesn't say the lawyers, it says the Jews said, you can't carry your bed on the Sabbath day. Here, this man was just healed. And the Jews, meaning the people that are the Jewish people, you know, they were telling him, on, uh, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. And they didn't even stop to question, wait, weren't you sitting there for 38 years trying to get into the pool, trying to be healed? We see what the scribes and Pharisees had, had done. They had added their traditions because healing on the Sabbath day, yes, yes, and yes, you know, it would be to the praise and glory of God. So, you know, were they involved in, in judging people? Uh, I, I, I think they still were. Were they communing with God? I don't know. Um, because Jesus had uh, quite a bit to say. I and mean, Brother Nathan, uh, you know, kind of brought out, you know, Jesus called them vipers. He called them whited sepulchers. He told them they're full of dead men's bones. He, basically meaning inside they're unclean. Wow. These are, they're supposed to be in Moses' position. And, and you know, they, they were still involved in judging people because they brought to him a woman, you know, taken in adultery. And, and, and you know, where... Uh, I wonder, why didn't they bring the guy also? I mean, that's, that's an honest question. And if you look at that, you'll be like, I think they had something. And when you find what Jesus did, you know, he just kind of ignored them and, and wrote in the sand, on the ground. He wrote on the ground and he listened to them saying, you know, sh you know, the law says she should be stoned. And he just continued writing on the ground. And then, and then we find that that let him with, who is without sin cast the first stone. And, and they were involved in, in judging people. They had the power and authority to judge people. And we'll find out uh, one of the other people that, that, that they tried to judge here. So Jesus, what, what, what did Jesus of Nazareth do? What did Jesus of, of Nazareth do? It's not actually Jesus of Nazareth, just... Uh, just wanted to, to give um, something to give you a reference point. You know, he's not this long-haired hippie with, uh, with hardly any melanin in his skin. Uh, you know, he's, he's a Jew, uh, a, a Hebrew, so he's more than likely going to have a little, little darker of skin, a little, little darker of, of hair. So I, definitely not Jesus, just from, just from a movie. So I want to give that example and set that uh, just just right from the get-go. Um, definitely not what you see of uh, being a long-haired uh, Caucasian hippie. So um, he was a Jewish man, and we find, we find out about this Jesus of Nazareth in, in John. We find some, something we don't find in the, the other three Gospels, the other three records of Jesus' uh, testimony of, of the prophecy, the spirit of Prophecy is Jesus. I might have mixed that up, but but John one one says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God." And when you notice in the King James Bible, in the Holy Bible, it says the Word with a capital W. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the Word, capital W, was with God, capital, and the Word capital was God. Amen. So we find that the word was God. And the word, verse 14, and the word, capital W, was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. Let me get that right. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the, of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, so Jesus was going to come in, in Moses' seat. 
he was going to come in this position that we've been kind of wondering what exactly was Moses' seat and what, what was uh, this in relation to God, the Son of God. Mo Moses taught the law. The Pharisees taught the law. Jesus of Nazareth taught the law. Hmm, interesting. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. This is, this is what Jesus said. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Jesus fulfilled the law of God. He taught the law of God and he fulfilled the law of God. And he taught the law of God more perfectly. And I think that's an important point because the seed of Moses was to teach. And here Jesus, he not only taught, but he taught the, the true intent of the law of God. And he was able to fulfill the law of God. God fulfilling the law of God. Imagine that, right? And, and Jesus died a terrible death on the cross for the wages of sin. This is something that the Pharisees and scribes and Moses didn't do. Jesus died on the cross for the wages of sin, which is death, a spiritual death. In Matthew Chapter 27, verse 20, But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. I told you a little bit earlier that we'd see the scribes and Pharisees judging people. Well, they were able to judge Jesus and get him put to death and, and convince the people that you really need, you want to release Barabbas. You know, never mind, he's a murderer. You know, and who knows what else he had done. But, but, but that, wasn't, that wasn't Jesus. Jesus wasn't judging people like that. Jesus was judging people only based on their sin. Romans 8, chapter, or Romans chapter 8 let me turn over there real quick. Romans 8, uh, verse 3 and 4. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Jesus became sin for us who, who knew no sin. And, you know, he taught the law of God. He fulfilled the law of God. And he was able to show that the law is indeed righteous, but nobody is able to live the law that is righteous. The law condemns us. I mean, it condemns me anyway. I, I don't know a person. I haven't met a person that can say, I haven't broken any of God's Ten Commandments, let alone all the 613 laws that or commandments that he given. There hasn't been a single person that did keep those. So Jesus kept the law and he became, he became the law. He became the, the punishment of the law. But he also is the righteousness of the law. The law is not a bad thing. The law is our schoolmaster. It's there to teach us. It's there for us to do good. I mean, it's there for, for everybody to, to love one another. I mean, that's what Jesus said. You know, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the law. It's, it's holy and it's righteous, but God, Jesus fulfilled that. He taught it and he fulfilled it. And you know, Jesus did something else that in Moses' seat that Moses didn't do and wasn't in Moses' place to do. Jesus became our high priest. So that wasn't a job that Moses was supposed to do. That's why when we go back and we read Exodus 24, 
he said, you know what, I'm going to go up and commune. Moses said, I'm going to go commune with God on the mount, and, but you've got Aaron and her if you've got stuff here. You've got priests that, that you can go to because that's how God established it. But God said, you know what, I need to be their high priest because no man will ever be a high priest that could forgive sins. Nobody ever could forgive sins. They went to the high priest because they sin, and the sin priest or the high priest goes, "Okay, well, let's offer a sacrifice for your sin. Let's ask God to be forgiven of it." Nothing different than today. Just today, we have we have Jesus, our high priest, in Hebrew, Hebrews for. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 and 15, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was, all, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So, so Jesus did become our high priest. And it's by him we have access to God. So that kind of brings me to the question, Moses' seat, Moses communed with God, he taught the law of God, and he judged people. Well, Jesus did all that, and he fulfilled the law, and all he did was judge sin. What about us? How does that apply today? Well, first of all, that law is there to condemn us. It's to show us that, um, I'm Brother Nathan, I'm looking in the mirror. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm good. I still look good after all these years. I'm just, I'm just giving somebody a hard time. I'm giving Brother Nathan a hard time. But hold on. Let me put the law of God up there. Oh, I'm not good. Hmm. I've broken the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth. Who knows how many laws out of the 613 I've broken. I've probably... I would even go so far, I mean, if Paul said he's the chief of sinners, what about me? Guilty, that law. I can't live it, but I know who did live it. God, the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah, he lived it. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, what can we do? We can repent. We can turn. We do a 180. We can turn from that sin that is there saying, uh, I haven't, I did, I had a God before you, I had idols before you, I can't even get past the first commandment. Romans chapter 10, 9 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It says it. All right there, you just have to believe in your heart. You have to confess to God that, that I've sinned and I need to be saved by the perfect law, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Boom, and then we're in Moses' seat. Think about this. I've been redeemed by the Lord Jesus. I'm no longer a sinner. I'm sitting in Moses' seat. Just think about this for a second. We can truly commune with God. No longer is there a, a ceiling of sin that, that oh God, I, I, you know, help me. Boom, that prayer just, that, that commune just boom, just bounces right back down because of that sin, but I don't, I'm not covered by sin anymore. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. That ceiling of sin is gone. My prayers can go up and I can commune with God. I'm sitting in Moses' seat now. I can teach the commandments of the Lord. 
And that's what's done here at church. That's what's done uh, in Club 316. That's probably what is being taught downstairs with, with the kids right now. And you know what? I can judge matters. You know, I can judge people. But I, I, I want to be very careful on this. I don't judge people. I judge matters that the people have said, you know, Peter said, you know, what, how often shall I forgive my, my brother if he trespasses against me? Seven times? Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. And if you back up from there, that's when they gave the, that's when Jesus said, you know what, if, if, uh, if your brother sin and trespass against thee, you know, go and tell him. Uh, he doesn't want to hear you. Go and get him and somebody else. And if he, they don't work that out, you go and get it and you bring the matters before the church. And that's something that Catholicism has right. I mean, I don't agree with, with most of their doctrine. If I won't go, go there, but they've got that right. They will, they will kick people out of church because they are sinning. That's what we should do. We shouldn't allow sin to destroy a church because church is the body of Christ. You get that? We're the body of Christ. We're the church. We're members. We're members one of another. We should kick sin out if it's having a problem. We can judge matters that are brought to the church. And you know what? God tells us something that's really interesting. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3, Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life, if we're, you know, if... if if we can judge angels, God tells us we're going to judge angels. We should be able to, to take care of things that, are, that we understand. So we can sit in Moses' seat and, you know, we can commune with God. We can teach the, the law, the commandments of God. We can teach the grace and love of God. We have to teach God as, as a balanced being, full of grace, mercy, and truth, but he's also just and, and perfect in all his ways. And, you know, we can, we can judge the matters of the church. And, you know, in Revelation chapter 1, besides judging angels, which I'm not standing in that line at all. <laughs> well, maybe I will. I don't know. Depends on what God has for us. In Revelation chapter 1, verse number 4, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, 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 grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Did you catch that right there? Did you catch that? I think I caught that. That washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and forever. To him be glory and dominion forever. Amen. I caught that. Jesus said we're going to be kings and priests unto God. So we've went from being in Moses' seat, and we've got a better seat when we stand before the Lord and we go, guilty. I'm, I, well, I won't be standing. I can tell you that. I know I won't be standing. I'll just be, I'm guilty. And... Jesus will said, I've paid his sin debt. Father, forgive him. I've paid his sin debt. You know what? Maybe I'll judge angels somehow because there are fallen angels that need to be judged. There are fallen angels that are reserved in everlasting chains of darkness, reserved unto the day of judgment. So maybe I will, but I'll, I'll be a king. I'll be an adopted king and priest to God. So not only do I get the privilege of being in Moses' seat, I've got so much better things to come. God tells us right here, God says it, and I believe it. That's all that matters. God says it, and I believe it. We can sit in Moses' seat right now, but 
so much more, so much more to come in heaven with, with the Lord, with the Lamb of God, with the Holy Spirit, with the, the great triune God. How much more? I need no other, I need no other word than, than knowing that this is the same word that is preached and has been preached ever since Jesus gave his life on Calvary to become sin. He became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Moses, see, yes, and so much more. But that first step is to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we just thank you for, for forgiveness, and, and we thank you for making a way to be forgiven. <laughs> I mean, you're so great. You're awesome. That's, that's all I have to say, Lord. Just use, the, use this however you will. I, I just give you all praise and glory, Jesus. Amen.